your face fills my mind. I get religion quick. Is he looking to buy? Honey, I'm touching something. They're touching me. I'm on the album, on the upspin. passerò le cuffie col microfono che verranno gestite come microfono non avendone un altro a Federica che farà anche la traduzione insomma di quello che Peter ci racconterà e poi ogni tanto quando vuoi tu scoppiamo un secondo e facciamo partire un paio di canzoni per eh, così anche lui respira un attimo va bene nel frattempo qui ci stanno portando dei grandissimi degli ottimi caffè se poi seguirete la pagina i profili social vedete che farò un po' di video e quindi riusciremo a raccontarvi bene questo momento siamo in un posto bellissimo. Federica, ti passo il microfono intanto e devo scuola il microfono. Sono sempre senza bisogno di mettere le cuffie. Ciao, so, hello everybody, and welcome Peter back to the Royal Opera House. I want to do the translated thing into Italian, but without any extra info, as with my conversation. Just say what? How to tell us everything. How we start, Perfect. how we so the whole... Perfect. Why are we here? Why are we here? <laughs> Um, this, I suppose, is sort of centrally where my story with Freddie started. The actual start is a short distance away from here at the London Coliseum. And this picture sort of describes what happened but you won't be able to see it. <laughs> Because this was when Freddie was, he had been invited by two of the dancers here at the Royal Opera House to perform in a big charity gala. Two of the dancers from here, De Derek Dean and Wayne Eagley, actually approached the, one of the governors of the Royal Ballet at that time who was Sir Joseph Lockwood. Um, but the thing is, he was also the chairman of EMI, who had the contract with Queen. So the dancers asked Sir Joseph if he would approach Freddie to do a charity show, because he was still wearing the ballet shoes and all of that sort of thing on his tours. So apparently, Freddie immediately says, yes, <laughs> because he'd always felt 
in his shows that he had all this balance and that he could do all these ballet moves. It wasn't until he started rehearsals that both the dancers or Freddie found that he could not do any choreography, he could not dance. <laughs> so in the end, it was just um, Freddie doing his stage show, but being lifted up and moved around by the ballet dancers. Um, he performed a great little thing called Love, wearing the leather hat, leather jacket, t-shirt, and jeans. Um, because this was when Crazy Little Thing Called Love was just released. This was in October 1979. During the applause, Freddie left the stage and then Bohemian Rhapsody started. And Freddie came on stage wearing a black um, bodysuit with some little sequins down the side of it. So, um, he sang Bohemian Rhapsody, then during the instrumental part he disappeared behind a group of dancers and as the singing started again they lifted him up and he was wearing the silver sequin outfit and that's where this picture comes in because at the end he was, lit he was held totally upside down in an inverted cross and one of the ballet dancers held the microphone to his mouth for any way the wind blows. <clears throat> Afterwards I then I had to go and see him. I, <laughs> it was just amazing. So um, I went to speak with him. Um, should I tell them about the shocks? <laughs> and I had two shocks. Well, the, I went, I mean, Freddie was standing there. I went to him, there was, I think Paul Prenter was with him at the time, that was all. And people asked me, what was my first thought? What was my first feeling when I met Freddie Mercury? And to be 100% truthful, it was, he's short. <laughs> because he was 175 centimeters, five foot nine. I was 187, six foot two. So I'm looking down. Um, then the second shock happened um, because I said to him, "Look, this was absolutely amazing. Your voice." Queen music and Royal Ballet dances. <laughs> um, Freddie's voice, Queen music and Royal Ballet dances. And then out from this rock star who's in his t-shirt and jeans and trainers came, oh you're so kind, thank you very very much. <laughs> Total opposite to what you expect from a rock star. <laughs> we just talked for a couple of minutes. Um, and then he said, look, I've seen you at the Opera House. What is your work there? And so I explained I would work for the Royal Ballet, looking after the costumes. You make them clean, put them on the dancers. They dance. You take the costumes off, get them ready for the next show. And that was the end of the conversation. Um, he went off with Paul, I went to find my friends. And about 10 days later, someone from Queen Management rang up my boss at the Opera House to ask if I would be available to do a six week tour with Queen looking after the stage costumes. And that was the start of the next 12 years. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, it was actually quite strange, though, because it literally was um, only for six weeks, and then the work was finished. And um, the Royal Opera House had made 
clear to me that if I did do this six weeks away, there would not be a job for me to come back to. Which is why it wasn't just a simple, yes, of course I'm going to do it. Um, I really had to think about it because, because. <laughs> um, in those days, a job here at the Opera House was really a job for life. You had, they paid you a pension, you had, you had everything. And once people had a contract here, nobody walked away. But on the opposite side of that coin, you have to be happy to be doing the same job for a long time, because the only way you'll get a promotion is if somebody dies. So in fact, like the book says, I, it was the right time and I picked the six week tour with Queen. Um, at the end of the six weeks I had to find some another job. And it's funny because in those days, I mean I'm sure it was the same in Italy as well, um, for the telephones you had you dialed for the operator, you dialed 100 and there was someone on the other end of the phone, operator services, can I help you? And so I got that job and I was doing that, but you know, pick, you pick up this cable and plug it in and you pick up another one and plug it in, so it was amazing. So I was just about to sign the permanent contract because I'd been there for three months and Queen rang up and said, we liked you, you seem to enjoy the job, will you come back and do the next tour with us? Sammy was low, just watching the show, over and over again. Knew it was time, he'd made up his mind to leave his dead life behind. His boss said to Yeah. 
services
from the Sunday until the Wednesday morning. And that annoyed the press and it also annoyed the other funeral directors. I hope all of this recording is just for yourselves. Okay. He does. He, does. he knows exactly where to okay. go. Okay, and y'all. Bohemian Rhapsody is being re-released and all royalties will go to the AIDS charity, the Terence Higgins Trust. The announcement about Queen's greatest hit came as friends and family bade their farewells to Freddie Mercury. In life, Freddie Mercury said he didn't have any real friends. At his funeral, they had to employ extra security to keep them away. Dozens of floral tributes had been arriving all morning, amongst them one from David Bowie. Will be missed, it said, echoing the sentiments of thousands of fans. In life so flamboyant, in death understated, his coffin born into the chapel bearing a single red rose. A short service featuring the music of Montserrat Caballé was conducted according to Freddie's Persian Zoroastrian faith. The congregation joining with priests in prayer and chanting. God will the, the news of Freddie's death from AIDS stunned the world, but none more so than the other members of Queen, there to mourn the loss of the man they call the greatest and most beloved member of our family. They were joined by Elton John and close friend Mary Austin with Dave Clark, the man who witnessed Freddie, as he put it, going to sleep. And as ever, the loyal fans, there to pay their last respects. He's rock and roll, he always has been. He always will be, even though he's now dead. Queen will, Queen will never be again. But their music will live on, I don't care what anybody says. When I'm dead, who cares, Freddie said in his last interview. Today, dozens proved they did. Fiona Phillips, Sky News. Okay. Okay. She said that the most people have seen the news footage of the time of the funeral. Um, the cars came in that way and came around here. So the main hearse was here. And then there were actually nine cars behind just the flowers. Um, you think you're going to a funeral, but all over there on those terraces was covered with people. Um, and that was the world's press. Um, as I say, you've seen all the television footage, um, and it was in here. Because at that time, the other side was just an empty concrete shell. Um, and it had been like that for maybe 50 years since the place had been built. Um, inside is like, it's like a church. You have seats this side and seats this side um, and you have the place with the coffin in the middle there on this side again like a wedding um, there were about 14 people who were friends of Freddie but on this side there were 50 close family members but he spoke to maybe maybe five of them um, as he went in, we had Aretha Franklin, You've Got a Friend, the music. A friend, you've got a you've friend. Got a friend. Ah. And when the coffin was going out, it was Montserrat Caballé d'Amor Solale Rosa. When I spoke to her, I don't know, a couple of years later, and I said what we had done, and she said, well, why didn't you phone me? I would have come and sung. Oh. Preguntas. 
Potete entrare dentro e dare un'occhiata. I think it's still open. I mean it might be locked it's Saturday and there's ah, yeah. no. Sì, sì, sì. It's so easy, but I can't do it So risky, but I got a chance it. So funny, there's nothing to laugh about My money, that's all you want to talk about Gente, eccoci qua. It's hers. Um, <laughs> Non ho capito che è in un posto di un'altra parte. Non 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 è i don't really know where to start then. Uh, actually, it'll be easier then if we just do questions rather because okay, we've we... talked so much about this place. Uh, so she says she saw a documentary on TV, in, on BBC, uh, and it was some days after uh, uh, Freddie had died and we're all the fans in front of the house and there was very loud Queen music coming from Logan Place as a tribute. It seemed like a tribute. Do you remember that? Who played this Football? music? Or it depends on how long after he died. And maybe the day after or oh, two, it, two more because yes. they were uh, crying outside and said we heard the new okay, and we then, came and we came and from the you can hear no in the No um, then if it happened I mean I don't I cannot remember that. But it wouldn't surprise me if Jim had done that. Jim, ah. Jim, also. Che non le sorprenderia che hubiera sido Jim. It was really moving, and yeah. for the fans also. Yeah. Mm. Ah, thank you. Okay. Hey, la um, the, no, I mean, the garden now is totally, totally different. It When Freddie was there, he, he, he loved the pond. He had an azalea mound just here. But everything else he left sort of like the Victorian mm. 
garden. <laughs> now it is, I mean, now they've taken down the conservatory, I mm. mean, everything, they've made it into a really nice garden. Uh, she would like to know if you return to garden lodging, which was your role and where you like a guest, were you invited for tea, was it? I would, I, yeah, I've been once in 2003. And it's, I was just in London and I came past and I just rang the doorbell. And Mary answered and says, come in. Did Mary live in Garden Lodge or just after Freddie passed away? No, I mean, I think basically she lived in the Mews rather than Garden Lodge. But when she was, I know when she was married, she lived in Garden Lodge. Okay, but after Freddie, everything after Freddie passed yes, away, I mean, Freddie. until he was alive, yeah. she was Absolutely. never leaving here, right? No, no, no. no. Okay. Yeah. She was controlling yes. it kind of yeah. 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 Because I know there was someone there cleaning it every day, mm. just normal. Ah. The cats, Oscar left of his own free will. Because the thing is, he was the oldest cat. And normally a cat, the oldest cat, rules the roost mm. but there was always another cat arriving and another cat arriving <laughs> and i mean he just felt left out <laughs> so i mean you. literally um within days of freddie going he moved in to a house the other side of the wall Oscar. Yeah. Huh. then delilah goliath and miko stayed and uh, Lily and Romeo were given new homes. One thing I should make clear, this is not one acre of garden like you read in the press. Mm. It's, it's about a quarter of an acre. Um, and there are not 26 bedrooms. We've just worked, gone from room, 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 room. There are nine rooms. So in truth, how could nine rooms become a museum? Has Michael Jackson ever come here? He asks. Okay. I don't think so. No. no. <laughs> okay. Today I'm realizing my dream since I was seven years old when Brandy dies. Now I'm 39. I was seven years old. Today is my first time I'm here. Oh, so Aww. you've been very lucky to meet yes. Isa. It's, it's a sign of destiny. Oh. Ah, he even lost his wallet on the bus on his way here. Oh, no. But he don't care. You have to come here. <laughs> Unbelievable Sends me real